Hey, church family. Happy Sabbath from Denise, Katie, and Todd. Hope everybody has had a great week. And uh, we've been blessed with some little cooler temperatures and a little bit of rain. So hopefully fall is coming towards us. Katie has told us that it's getting a little cooler in the mornings there. And so uh, we're glad to hear that. Seems like it's been a long summer. Uh, hope you guys are doing great and have had a, a blessed Sabbath so far. I uh, just want to continue to ask you, everybody to pray. Um, High Springs uh, is back inside their building, I believe, again today. And Jennings Lake, uh, this will be our fifth Sabbath back, uh, and God is blessing. And so um, don't forget to respond to Miss Denise's emails uh, when she sends those out about head counts, because Pastor Carl needs to uh, make sure that he's got everything ready for social distancing so that we can follow all of the Florida Conference and NAD guidelines and CDC guidelines and whatnot. So very important if you get a chance, send a text or an email back to the head count emails. Also, I want to encourage everybody to tune in Tuesday nights at 7 p.m. Uh, we had a, a long distance church family join us this past Tuesday for a great study that Pastor Carl is leading out in the book of Matthew. Uh, Harry and Melissa Figueroa, all the way from Virginia, our church family there joined in via Zoom, um, and Miss Denise will remind the entire church family via email uh, a little bit before uh, the Zoom meeting starts on Tuesdays. And so I promise you, I guarantee you that you will learn something new as Pastor Carl unpacks and unfolds and digs into Matthew. It's been a great study so far, so we want to just invite everybody uh, to show up to our district-wide prayer meeting at 7 p.m. on Tuesday night. If you have any trouble connecting, uh, can't get on, uh, please don't call me because uh, I don't know how either usually. Uh, Denise takes care of all of that, but just get with Miss Denise and she'll be glad to help you out with that. Um, also, just want to uh, remind everybody, please lift up our brother Mark Stewart. Uh, Mark will be going in this Monday, the 14th, for shoulder surgery. Um, and it is a outpatient procedure. They'll put him out, fix his shoulder that is damaged and get him back to the house. And so we just ask that you'll pray for Mark and Noe, me and the whole family and uh, that his recovery process will be 100%. And so just lift the family up. And I wanna also remember Miss Lenora <laughs> Jones uh, is down at the Tri-County Nursing Home and Miss Denise sent an email out a little earlier her personal cell phone is not working at the moment, but she does have a number that you can contact her that rings right to her. And she loves to get calls, loves to hear from church members. So if you get a minute, give her a telephone call. And with that, we will get started with some music. Um, dug out my old guitar. Uh, one of the very first that I ever got. Um, it is about, I bought it a year before Katie was born approximately, so it's about 24 years old. Uh, and as I got prepared uh, uh, for this week's message and last week's at the church, um, I got out this old guitar, and I haven't played it in months. I uh, usually play my other guitar, um, and, and this guitar is sat off by itself in its case. Case had dust on the top of it. Uh, and so when I got it out, you know, it was still ready to go. It was just about, it's still in perfect tune. And when I picked it up and started playing it, it was like a, a old friend. And the correlation dawned on me that sometimes maybe uh, can our Bibles be like our old friend that maybe we have here in the house and it's here with us and, and it's here, but it's just sitting there collecting dust. And so uh, if you haven't had a chance for some good Bible study, uh, I just want to encourage you to pick up that old friend and dust it off maybe and, and dig into a, a book that is particularly familiar to you, one that speaks to you, and, and uh, be sure you're studying God's Word every day. All right, we're going to get started off just to get me warmed up with Miss Edwina's song, number two. Father, 
y'all hear that? That second guitar? That's Brother Alvin, who from his house, I know he's got his picked up and he's playing right along with us. So Alvin, we're glad that, that you're joining us here as well. All right. All right, we're going to do one of Miss Karen's favorite songs. And this is 37 in our books. And this is the day that the Lord has made. Let's talk about Jesus. Let's talk about Jesus. The King of Kings is He. The Lord of Lords free to long The great I am the way. The truth the life. Let's talk about Jesus. Talk about Jesus, the King of Kings is He, the Lord of Lords, bring to all eternity. The great I am the way, the truth of life, Lord. Let's talk about Jesus more and more. Oh, my loving brother, who's on fire, don't you want God's bosom for to be your fellow? Amen. All right, let's do one more. All right, number 154. Our God is an awesome God. church family. If you want to get your Bibles and go ahead and get them open to Matthew chapter 11. And we're going to look uh, today real quickly at 11 uh, verse 25 through 30. Um, and we're going to then talk about a book that Denise is doing with her new devotional. So let me get my Bible 
uh, is already here opened up. And let's have a word of prayer as we get into God's word. Father God, we thank you for the opportunity to uh, worship with you over the uh, telephones, the airwaves, the internets, our computers. Lord, we thank you that we can worship back physically in Jennings Lake. Lord, we just ask that you'll bless abundantly Pastor Carl's district and Ms. Sharon's district. Lord, whether we are worshiping and studying together uh, over the airwaves or whether we are back in our physical buildings, Lord, we just ask that you will be with every believer here today. Lord, let us hear and see only Jesus is our prayer in his name. Amen. So we're going to go ahead and read a little bit of scripture first, and then we're going to get into uh, the topic today. Verse 25, uh, my Bible headline says that it's called, it says, Jesus gives true rest. And it says in verse 25, at that time, we're in Matthew 11, 25. At that time, Jesus answered and said, I thank you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, that you have hidden these things from the wise and prudent and have revealed them to babes. Even so, Father, for it seemed good in your sight. All, the, all things have been delivered to me by my Father, and no one knows the Son except the Father, nor does anyone know the Father except the Son. And the one to whom the Son wills to reveal him, come to me, all you who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Isn't that a wonderful promise? Jesus right there is bidding them in his day as well as us in our day that if you're burdened, if you're heavy labored to come to him, he's going to give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. That's Matthew 11. We're going to stay in the book of Matthew today, so you can kind of leave that right where that's at. Um, Denise is uh, reading a book, uh, and she's doing her devotion, and she does hers through her uh, little round device that she speaks to, and, and she's got it, tells her uh, weather and plays music and has books on it. Um, and so it's, it, it's reading this book to her. And so she does this as her daily devotional. It's called Not a Fan. A lot of you in the church I know are very familiar with this. Denise and I have brought back several copies from College Dale to in the books that the church gives out, and the copies have almost always been gobbled up by uh, by all of our church family. I know that this is also especially popular with young people for devotion, uh, but it's for it's for people of all ages. Uh, when Katie was younger, a teenager in high school, and part of the AY group. Uh, with Marco and Elena and Lizzie and Kaylin and Jaren and just a host of other young people, Leanne, uh, that they met at Danny and Annabelle Varner's house. And Annabelle and Danny were the AY leaders. And so they would get together usually Sabbath afternoon and Saturday night and have a wonderful Vespers for the young people, music and singing and games and food and just great fellowship. But their devotional that they were being led with uh, I believe by Gabe, uh, was by not a fan. And so as Denise and I started reading this, parts of this, uh, along with Katie, got interested. It is a great, great book. And so I encourage you that if you don't have it, uh, I believe it's available. Uh, is it available on Kindle? Yes. Uh, so it's available on Kindle. Uh, it's available on hardback. And I think there might even be still one original copy at the Jennings Lake Church. But as I was doing some uh, some things in a different part of the house this past week. I heard Denise doing her devotional and what I came upon I thought was really great because what, what he's talking about is not a fan. He's not a, he doesn't want us to be fans of Jesus. And when you first hear that, you think, well, wait a minute, shouldn't we be fans of Jesus? But the point that this book is making out is that we shouldn't be fans of Jesus, that we should be followers of Jesus because fans usually only have a superficial uh, knowledge, depth to what they're into, whether it's their sports team or, or, or their football team or their school study or relationship or whatever the case is, they're fans, but they're not followers. And through this book, the author wants to turn us into followers of Jesus Christ and not fans. Uh, one of the things that, that this chapter that she's in coming from page 78, I think through 83, when I heard her listening to this devotional, it talked about how 
we sometimes as church people can get caught up in putting rules over relationships that we've got all the rules down path that we're going to follow these rules that we're not going to budge and it is about rules and not relationships and as i thought about this book you know um, if, if, if I can say, if I had to summarize what Pastor and Ann Crawford's message was here for us in their nine years at Jennings Lake and High Springs, was that they focused on, yes, the rules are important and the 28 fundamentals are important and all these things are important. And I believe in all of those, absolutely. But they wanted us to focus on it's got to be the relationship with Jesus Christ. It can't be about rule keeping. It can't be about <coughs> box checking. But it has to be that relationship because the Pharisees had all the rules down, but they missed the Messiah. And so as I was listening to Denise's uh, book that was, that was coming out of her, uh, her device, um, it talked about a man whose name was John. And John walked into a bank and, and, and John was dressed, you know, nice enough. He had on a pair of blue jeans and a, and a shirt. And as he walked into the institution... Uh, he spoke with one of the tellers and said that he was here this day to conduct business with one of the bank officers, and he was here for his appointment. And when the young lady explained to him that that officer was not in today and that he would need to come back tomorrow, John said that, that that's okay and that I will make arrangements to come back tomorrow, but, but, but beans, I'm here, I would like my parking to be validated, please. And so the individual said, well, technically we only validate parking. Our rules are if a financial transaction has taken place. And since you were here today, but no financial transaction has taken place, we're going to be unable to validate your parking. And so as John thought about that for a minute, he said, well, he said, I, I understand rules are, are, are rules. He said, but I, I did come here today uh, for my appointment that I was told to come. And it's not my fault that the uh, bank officer isn't here today to conduct the business. So as you can see, I really think an exception needs to be made because I was here following my instructions, uh, but he isn't here. Uh, and so could you please make an exception and validate my parking? And the uh, individual said, I'm sorry, but rules are rules. No financial transaction has taken place today. I'm sorry, we won't validate your parking. And so with that, John, whose last name, by the way, just happened to be Akers, uh, and John Akers was the chairman of the board of the corporation you might have heard of called IBM. And so Mr. Akers said, okay. And so he went to the desk and he told the individual there, he said, I'd like to make a transaction. He said, I'd like to close out my personal account uh, and, and I'd like to go ahead and do that now. The account that John Akers closed out had a balance in it of $1.5 million. After he completed his transaction, he went back to the same individual who earlier said that, sh that they couldn't help him with validation because no transaction had occurred. He said, as you can see, I now have fulfilled that requirement. A transaction has occurred. Could you please validate my parking at that time, which they did. So the book asks the question, rules are important, but in this case, was keeping that rule more important than the relationship with that client? And now that bank has lost the relationship with that client. Probably they never got it back. And that man walked out of there with a cashier's check for $1.5 million to take that to another bank, their competition, all over because the rule was being followed. You see, this, this individual missed the relationship part. And instead of being flexible and understanding what had happened and what had not happened, if that individual would have validated that parking, he would have left a happy customer, come back the next day, and they still would have had that account. You know, as we just read in John chapter 11, I think that if you're like me, there's a lot of us that go through this life burdened and, and stressed and and our burdens are heavy and the yokes that we feel like we're carrying are, are heavy laden. But Jesus right there, he tells us, he says, I want you to come to me. You don't have to do this. You don't have to, to earn this. Come to me that, that my, my yoke, my burdens, they are easy. They, they are light. 
I like what I believe John chapter 23. Let me check my notes. Uh, excuse me, Matthew 23, verses 23 through 28. If you want to look for a little Sabbath reading, uh, Matthew 23, 23 through 28 goes into where Jesus in that chapter, for the most part of it, he is explaining to all these individuals that the Pharisees and all the religious leaders that you guys are, are have gone so far and have made so many man-made rules and that you're imposing such a burden on keeping the Sabbath and all these rules holy that religion, that worshiping God has become such a heavy burden. It's so tough to even, to even be able to, to follow it correctly in their eyes. Jesus is reminding them, he said, you know, you guys have taken this to the nth degree to where now you are wanting to exact tithe on their spices, on their on their their uh, their uh, things that they use uh, to to make their meals with, and so these little tiny fine spices and and leaves you're wanting them to to tie the palm. Jesus goes on and makes the analogy in Matthew 23 that some of you are straining gnats while you're swallowing camels. And as I read that, there are some people back in Jesus's day that that, that were so religious that they were so afraid that that gnat was unclean that they didn't want to drink it that they were straining the water in which that they were drinking but yet in other things they were not so strict and so Jesus is using that example that you guys are 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 majoring in minors right that you are straining gnats but you're swallowing camels I wonder sometimes uh, do I get caught up in that I've got to check my boxes off that I've got to make sure that I've done this this and this uh, for my relationship to stay right with Jesus. We just read Jesus that we've got to do uh, in order to, to do that. He just says, come to me and, and I'm going to take these burdens. I'm, I'm going to take this off of you that you don't need to, to earn your A. Uh, when I say you don't need to earn your A, there's another great story in this chapter that I heard that I thought was such a, a great symbol of somehow we strive to attain our our Christian walk with with Jesus. Uh, the author points out that as he was in his uh, Christian high school uh, years ago, uh, they were coming up to the very last final exam of the school year, uh, and it was in chemistry. And they knew that this chemistry test was going to be super difficult, super hard. And so all the class had been studying, 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 trying to get prepared for what they knew was going to be a super hard test. And so as they piled into the classroom for that last final exam in the chemistry teacher's room, chemistry teacher had told them that he had been reading a book by Dr. Charles Stanley. Um, and, and hopefully some of you have heard him speak, uh, a, a wonderful speaker. Uh, that I've had the privilege many times to watch on television. Uh, has a very, very, very large church up in the Atlanta, Georgia area. Great, great speaker. And the book that, that this teacher was reading was uh, an excerpt from this book was about grace and that you don't have to earn God's love. You don't have to earn God's grace. That is something that Jesus did for us at the cross. Freely he came and, and he died for all of us. And Jesus in Matthew 11 is trying to tell us, hey, come to me. I'm going to take these heavy, hard burdens that the Pharisees have got you straining under. Come to me and, and I'm going to give you rest. I'm going to lighten your load. And so because this section in this book about grace impressed this teacher so much that as the kids sat down in their chairs, he told them, he said, look, as I pass out the test, I don't want you to start writing anything, but yet I want you to read through every single page first. And then when you get to the end, you make your decision and then you can begin. And so as the author of our book, not a, not a fan, started looking over the first few questions, he knew immediately, oh no, he said, this is harder than I ever could have imagined. I should have studied more. I'm not prepared. I can't do this. I'm not going to do well on this test. And as he flipped through the back page, as he got to the very last question, it simply said, you have two options. You can choose to turn this test over and you can write your name at the top of it and you can turn it in for an automatic A. 
or you can choose to sit here in the classroom and you can take the test and see what you get. Our author said he didn't hesitate once. He said, a, a sure A, an easy A on a super hard test that I know I'm going to have difficulty with. There, there wasn't even a moment's hesitation. He wrote his name at the top of that paper and walked up with the rest of the class and turned it in to get that A because the teacher was concerned about showing them about how Jesus's grace is with us, that he's come, that Jesus has passed that test for us that we can't pass, that there's no way that we can be good enough, study enough, uh, pray enough, do good deeds, pay enough tithe, do all these things. There's no way that we can pass this test of salvation, that Jesus has already taken it and passed it for us when he hung on the cross for you, for me, for all of us. The author goes on to say that all the class except one individual put their name on the front and handed it in. You see, this one individual was the daughter of the biology teacher, and she was very smart, very brilliant, and she put in a lot of time, a lot of effort, a lot of struggle, a lot of sweat to getting prepared for that test. And she said that on principle, she was going to stay there and she was going to take that test and that nobody was going to just give her an A, give her a free pass, that if she got an A on this test, she was going to earn it. As I read that, I thought the point he's making is really clear, isn't it? Is that sometimes how I can be, as we can be as Christians, that, that we have to do it ourselves, that, that we can't just let go and turn it over to God and, and take Jesus' yoke on, take that, that lightening of our burdens, that somehow this is only going to work if we're right in there, if, if we're just struggling, if we're bogged down. And that's not what Jesus wants for us. John 10 tells us, right, that, that Jesus has come and he wants to give us life abundantly. Pastor Mark's way is good. That was his tagline. That's what he had on his email. Every email that he sent out, it talked about how Jesus says wanting to come and give us life to the fullest. That's what Jesus wants for you and I. He doesn't want us to struggle over that test, to sit there and, and try to do it on our own. And he's already taken that test for us and has passed it and has assured us all that we're going to have that A, and that as long as we accept his sacrifice and ask for forgiveness of our sins, that we're going to be with him in heaven. So as I thought about this great devotional that my wife is going through, not a fan, uh, pick it up if you get the opportunity. Go online and, and check it out. Uh, if you need a free copy, we can maybe try to, try to get you one. Uh, wonderful book. But the illustration was obvious to me that I need to quit trying to earn God's favor and salvation, that I need to accept what Jesus has done, accept his A for my life and my salvation. Denise and I uh, hope that you have a great and blessed Sabbath. Uh, Katie sends uh, her love as well up from College Dale. And uh, we just want to encourage you to spend time in Matthew today, both chapters, Matthew 11 and Matthew 23, uh, that there's some wonderful stuff in there that Jesus points out about how he's already solved these problems for us. We hope that everybody has a great rest of the weekend and a blessed and prosperous week. Take care.